UTMB Health, working together to work wonders. Dr. Laurie Thomas, who is Associate Dean for Student Affairs and Admissions, will now introduce this year's student class speaker. Dr. Thomas. Thank you, Dr. Jacobs. It is my distinct pleasure to introduce our 2013 School of Medicine commencement speaker, Mr. Jason Burroughs. <laughs> Mr. Burroughs is an outstanding student who has received awards and scholarships for academic excellence during his undergraduate and medical school years. Mr. Burroughs graduated magna cum laude from the University of California, San Diego, where he was a member of the Phi Beta Kappa Honor Society. At UTMB, he was a junior electee to the Alpha Omega Alpha Honor Medical Society, as well as the Gold Humanism Honor Society, where he served as UTMB's chapter's co-president the past year. He is the recipient of the Campbell Family Scholarship in honor of Winful M. Campbell, Jr., M.D., the Distinguished Student Award in Pediatrics, and the Edward Randall Medical, excuse me, Medal uh, for Academic Excellence. Mr. Burroughs has been very active in community service, which includes serving as a volunteer for the St. Vincent's Clinic and judge for the annual Galveston County Fair and Engineering uh, Fair. He has tutored medical students and served as co-chair of the class of 2014 and 2015 step prep program, where many of you are familiar. Mr. Burroughs also participated in the Bright program aimed at developing healthy lifestyles and safe outdoor activities for children in the Galveston Independent School District. He has authored co-authored a peer review article, presented a poster at the Go Humanism Honor Society by annual meeting in Chicago last October. He has chosen pediatrics uh, for his professional future career, and next month he will begin his residency at the University of Colorado School of Medicine in Denver, his number one choice. Mr. Burroughs is a highly focused, dedicated, and gifted individual who is truly an inspiration to others and, might I add, to myself. So please join me in welcoming this most extraordinarily talented student. Jason, please step forward. Thank you, Dr. Thomas, for the kind introduction. Good morning, and welcome, class of 2013. Welcome to our families, friends, faculty, and guests. We truly appreciate your time to join us on this important day. It is an honor and privilege to be part of this graduating class. The group of individuals sitting before you are some of the brightest and most dedicated I've had the opportunity to know. About two months ago, exactly one hour before match day envelopes were dispersed, in front of the entire class, I found out I was selected to speak. Yes, it was quite an overwhelming experience. My mind raced back and forth between the news of commencement and my fate in the computer-generated match. <laughs> Yet, as my anxiety faded, I quickly realized the incredible honor my classmates had granted me, and with that, I am humbled to speak on their behalf. Today is a great day of celebration and the culmination of four years of hard work. Now, I stand up here as one last obstacle before your MD. <laughs> I hope to share our journey, and of course, I promise I will keep it short. It seems like yesterday that we were seated in Levin Hall with our families and friends, eagerly and nervously awaiting our white coats. A time, as a guy from San Diego, when I was still fascinated by the word, y'all. <laughs> we literally attacked medical school, so unbelievably scared of the unknown. In the first days, we watched classmates faint in gross anatomy. We dissected human bodies in the morning, and we listened to each other's hearts and lungs in the afternoon. 
Over the next two years, we fell into a rhythm as we studied each organ system. NHB with Dr. Blankenship, who returned from retirement. CVP with the late Dr. Broderick. And GI lectures from Dr. Goodgame that were so incredible, we can still replay his words today. Cryptosporidium. <laughs> Before we knew it, the end of second year was upon us. Our, as our first board exam approached, we watched our OCD tendencies emerge. We posted up in study rooms, and we all, at some point, looked unkept. Logically, each shower we skipped was at least one more point added to our score. <laughs> Despite the stress, the first half of medical school was over, and we had arrived in the hospital for third year. Together, we spent long nights responding to traumas, seeing and caring for patients in motor vehicle accidents and with gunshot wounds. We rotated throughout the night, taking turns delivering babies. We learned very quickly that shoe covers are an absolute necessity in obstetrics and that there is an indefinite line of laboring women. We spend our days, our days rounding on the ward, seeing patients of all ages and with various illnesses. We learned about common and many rare diseases under our great bedside professors, including Dr. Boyers and Dr. Carnath, who are here today. In pediatrics, we high five children who smiled despite serious illnesses. In clinic, they shared their boogers, and no matter how hard we tried, we all got a cold. And of course, like all medical students during surgery, we held retractors in the OR for hours. And when all we could think about was how much our arm hurt, we were pimped by the attending. We fumbled with suturing and created some one-of-a-kind scars. <laughs> we encountered patients who changed our lives in personal and professional ways. Patients who could teach us in one week more than we had learned in our previous years combined. Each of us now carry our own memories of those we helped and those we lost. Patients who, in their own time of struggle, gave us strength. As a class, we have accomplished and contributed much in the past four years. The St. Vincent Student Run Free Clinic has cared for thousands of patients. Our classmates have created and participated in numerous volunteer activities on the island, in Texas, and abroad. Those have included medical mission trips, health fairs, and health education events, and camps for children with chronic illnesses, to name a few. We have authored and published scientific literature from pediatric cardiology post-burn to the basic science of protein stability and folding. People have traveled around the world to care for patients on multiple continents, including numerous countries in Africa and South America. During the last four years, we have laughed and cried together. We've enjoyed intramural sports, school-sanctioned and non-sanctioned parties, and rocked out to live music from six to midnight. Some of our classmates have found love, and many have been married. We've seen colleagues complete marathons and Ironman triathlons in memory of loved ones and as personal challenges. We have welcomed miniature and arguably cuter versions of our classmates into the world. We have shared the last four years, and I hope have made one another better for it. All these wonderful experiences and accomplishments have only been possible with the love and support of our families, friends, and mentors. On behalf of the entire class, Thank you. Thank you for giving us guidance and encouragement when we struggled, and for celebrating in our successes. Thank you to our parents for adjusting without complaint to the distance medical school can create. Thank you to our families for pretending to understand our abnormal behavior before exams, and for cutting us slack when we forgot important dates. Thank you to our beloved faculty for pushing us to develop into well-rounded graduates, for providing us countless opportunities in research, community service, and clinical exposure that broadened our horizons and prepared us for future endeavors. Thank you to our administrators who are educators first and were truly invested in our happiness and success. Personally, I wanna thank my wife for putting up with the long hours of work that at times left me mumbling in my sleep, such as during gross anatomy, when I sat upright in bed to discuss the mesentery on the wall. Despite the stress and struggles, she always found a way to make me smile, and I would not be here today without her. Each of our paths to graduation have been different, and each have been challenging. But I believe our class together has made the journey easier. With the help of UTMB's curriculum and our awesome faculty, we created an unmatched atmosphere of collegiality and dedication that has fostered learning to become great physicians, as opposed to great medical students. Now, 
I'm supposed to give you an inspirational message, but I'm not sure what to say. Y'all, class of 2013, have been my inspiration over the past four years and have made medical school a wonderful experience. Your dedication and compassion have never ceased to amaze me. I've seen you working tirelessly in the care of your patients, and I've seen you stand up for your colleagues in times of need. In light of my future as a pediatrician, and my undergraduate time spent in Geisel Library, I must quote Dr. Seuss. Out there things can happen, and frequently do, to people as brainy and footsie as you. And when things start to happen, don't worry, don't stew. Just go right along, you'll start happening too. A stanza that has much deeper meaning as our first day of residency is fast approaching. We all know there will be overwhelming situations, some which we cannot control. We will all stumble as things happen, but if we continue with the dedication and compassion I have seen, we will all succeed in the care of our patients. Class of 2013, our time at UTMB has provided us the knowledge and skills to confidently enter into the next phase of our careers. As we begin our training, keep striving for excellence. Inspire your, patient, your patients, your colleagues, and the medical students. Treat the medical students well and encourage their development in the art and science of medicine. Know that everything you teach, you will learn even better. Care for your patients without reserve. Be a healer as well as a physician, providing the opportunities to hear your patients' words and understand their struggles. Know that extra energy invested in a patient will almost always be returned to you. Our current successes have definitely been measured and our future achievements are unknown. Continue to pursue the dreams with which you entered medical school. Establish vaccine programs in developing nations. Discover a medical breakthrough that will prevent Alzheimer's. Lead a university as dean of medicine. Care for generations of patients, change communities, and save lives. We have about a decade until our reunion, so let's get started. Congratulations, doctors.